Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So, I want to build some uh, basically just because I like them. So, I'm going to go for the, uh, or I've gone for the Egress Black Edition. And just looking really forward to building this. And built a few different Tamiyas. So, I thought this time we'll go for one of the sort of higher end ones. Um, got an idea what motor and that I want to put in this. So, I uh, just thought I'd bring you along. And anybody wondering how one of these things go together, here we go. So, let's have a look what you get in box. So, definitely a little different from uh, your average Tamiya car. So we've got the carbon chassis, we've got the really nice shocks. Um, <laughs> really like the amusing way they've done the body shell with the tyres stuck on it. So, I do like that. Um, you've got the under tray. Looks like we've got a bunch of gears, um, more gears in there, we've got aluminium uprights, aluminium hexes, then full bearings by the look of it, also one way bearing, uh, it looks like we're running CVDs on it, so that's nice, uh, looks like carbon bits and motor man, so a nice shot of all them, quite nice blue bits. We got a bunch of uh, normal plastic parts, the obligatory huge aerial straw, does anybody use them now? So yeah, just a bunch of the uh, standard plastic parts on the tree. So let's have a look what we've got on this side. It's a nice shot of the uh, aluminum parts and carbon parts. So we got quite nice uh, sort of gunmetal grey wheels, rear spoiler, that is really thick, <laughs> that's, that's a lot thicker than any of my race RCs. So we do get the shock oil with it, and we got all the shock o-rings, it looks like we get double sided velcro, so that's, that's quite nice, more bearings. And uh, looks like we've got the sway bars in it as well. And another sway bar. And a little spanner. They come in really, really handy for adjusting tie bars. And uh, what do we have in this bag? A bunch of bearings and some really tiny bearings. And you do get a pinion with it. And we do get a lot of little bearings. So I'm guessing it's ball diffs. I think it looked like ball diffs. Hmm. At least some of them are balls. What's that? And it looks like we've got metal output shafts as well, output cups. So, in the bottom, we get your mandatory sticker set, and you do get the window masks, which is nice. But I don't think I'm going to use these sort of blue stickers. I've got something else in mind for windows. And then hiding in the bottom. So we've got as uh, destruction book. That yeah, looks like it's going to be quite an interesting build. This one, a little bit different from uh, from the average Tamiya cars. Not sure what that is, but let's get all this lot out of the way and crack on with build. All right, so we're going to need that part of the gearbox first. B1. We're going to need the motor plate. So, first off, it's asking us to drop this into position. And it seems as though that one is tapered. I think you're better off getting that in first. But I'm not going to tighten it all the way down. But that is going to go into that one. Then We've got the really fine threaded one, and I'm really glad I got hold of these JIS screwdrivers because this would be a nightmare. And then finally, we've got one of the coarse threaded ones in the top. Just make sure they're all nipped up. 
then it's telling us we need to put a piece of foam on here it shows you the size to cut it to uh, it says it should come right up to the bottom of that so that's what we should end up with so on to the next part so we're going to be using the uh, Spec 6 V10 LRP brushed motor. So first thing we're going to want to do is mount the actual motor itself. So hopefully these are the right threads. Not tried this yet, but it does seem like they're going to fit. So quickly get the motor screws tightened up. Make sure they're not fouling the motor at all. Then we're going to need to fit the pinion. So we're going to need to get this into position and then just nip it up. Then you're going to want to set this pinion, so you're going to want it 13 millimeters from the actual motor plate itself. So let's get that tightened up. So once we've got this pinion in place, we're then going to want to mount this onto here should come through straight into the bottom screw hole and then as top one as a tiny washer in place and it does tell you just to nip the motor up of course obviously you're gonna to have to set the gear mesh when you've got all the uh, diff and everything in place and all the spur gear I'm not sure how tight we're going to have to do this because I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get to the bottom but as you can see that's how you adjust your uh, gear mesh so that's got his motor in place let's see what else we need right so it does tell you to smooth the edges off with a knife and it does tell you to use CA glue on the outside of it. Now, I'm not going to because I don't really mind getting uh, carbon fibre splinters and it's not really going to get hammered this car. So, But, basically, we get our motor mount and you drop three of these inserts in. I do find it strange that it doesn't tell you to thread lock anything. Let's see if it's easier doing these one at a time. I kind of think it's going to be. So we get one of the inserts, pop that in. And let's get that started. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down just yet. So then we can drop another of his inserts in stick his finger on it to hold it and I suppose the CA glue around edge at carbon it can make it a bit more resilient to uh, taking knocks but I've done it on some of my race cars and I haven't done it on others and to be honest I've not had any problem with any at carbon without doing it so the one thing that you do need to be uh, mindful of when you're tightening these up is it's into carbon so if you go too tight with it you're going to split your carbon and you don't want to be doing that then, lastly, 
we need to get this center stay in position so we should be able to put as cat sunk screw through and basically that's what you should be left with should have the motor mounted do find it weird how it's like on a slant I suppose it'll make sense as we carry on with build but motor mount and then them three four screws in bottom and then that's that part done let's see what else we need right so next we're going to need one of these little bearings and as usual i'm using the hoodie grease on these so you just need to uh, drop that bearing in there then we need to get that part and you're going to want another bearing in then we're going to slide that into there and make sure it's all the way down then on the top part we're going to need to screw one of them and we're going to need a screw in the bottom so we should end up with that built up two bearings in it and assembled like that all right see what else we've got right so moving on looks like we need to place that inside the part that we've already got assembled and then we want one tapered screw going into there and it looks like it's turned us to put that part facing upwards then we're going to get the gear, I believe this is H4, you're going to drop that in and then we're going to insert the front pulley through it or the front uh, drive shaft through it, prop shaft sort of coupling, make sure that can spin freely. Then we're going to get the opposite part and we're going to slide this together. And we're going to need another of these in and it does tell you when you tighten these up make sure the holes are facing front to back on them both so you might not be able to tighten them all the way down I wouldn't keep forcing it to get it to line up I'd back it off because it has also got these screws in that hold it together as well and a proper set of screwdrivers for the Tamiya screws really does come into its own when you're building these Tamiya cars. It just makes it so much easier when the uh, screw will stay on end at screwdriver and you're not trying to fight it and push it in. But I believe that is going to be the front bulkhead. So let's carry on building. Right, so. First off, we're going to need to get these two in place. So, start by flipping it upside down. And we're going to want to drop one of them through. Then we're going to get a second one in place. Then we're going to want to fasten this on the two sort of furthest back. So if we get it this way round, and we're going to want a screw in each one of these. And these are the countersunk coarse threaded screws. So you're going to want all four of them in, and we'll get these tightened up. And I'd just like to sort of nip these down because they're all countersunk. So I like to try and nip them down and let them find their own position before I tighten them up. And I'm not really sure why, but I kind of expected this car to be smaller. I don't know why. Because I've had Tamiya buggies in the past. But for some reason, 
it just seems like it's going to be bigger than I thought it were. And again, you don't want to be over tightening this because you're just going into plastic and carbon. And you don't want the tapered head screws to be forcing it apart. So, that is the chassis built. So, let's continue on. So, let's see how we get on with these. So we start building the uh, rear one and we're going to need some ball diff grease and like always it goes absolutely everywhere so you're going to want to get some diff grease and then we're going to put one of the plates in and that also needs some diff grease on so any excess you can just wipe off and get it all on there then you're going to want a bearing and again I've used the hoodie grease on these then the shallower side of this needs to sit on then we're going to have to get these little bearings in place so once you've got them in we're then going to want to get some of our diff grease all over these bearings and all these years of building these RC's I have never found any way of building this without getting covered in it but you definitely want to make sure you've got plenty of grease in there or else you'll just end up with your diff running dry and baking itself so once we've got that side in place you're then going to want another bearing then we're going to want to get some diff grease on here then we're going to want another of these plates in place and when you've got that in place going to want to fit that and that will keep your diff together and if you've got enough grease on there it should hold together then we get these little fiddly things so the easiest way I've found of doing this and I say easier because <laughs> it's not easy then we're going to want to get as anti-wear grease So once we've got that in place, then you're going to need to somehow pick all these little bearings up and get these sat on here because these are going to make your thrust bearing if you like. So you're then going to carefully squash all them into the grease and then slide the other one down on it and you're basically making a cageless bearing so once we've got all them in place you're then going to slide this inside and just be very careful that you don't get any of your bearings slide out so once we've got that in we're then going to fit one of the springs and it does tell you to pre-crimp these once before you put them in then once that's in place you need to very carefully get this end cap on and then we're going to screw it all together so we're going to want the end cap to go down the two narrowest holes And basically it tells you to tighten this all the way down so snug that all the way down and then it tells you to back it off one full turn and 
and that should be your diff set. So you should then be able to rotate the diff and it should spin nice and smoothly but not slip. So that is the rear one. Now we need to get the front one built. So let's get some more bearings out. So again we're going to start with this one. We're going to put plenty of uh, diff grease on it. And we're going to get one of those plates, squash it into place, and then spread any of the excess grease all around it. Once you've got that into place, you can pop on a bearing. We're going to put this with the shorter side face down again. And um, we're going to need to get nine bearings in here. So once we've got those bearings in, we can then get some grease on this side. Then we're going to need to take this, get some diff grease on it. Then we can drop our second bearing in. And we're going to need to close up the diff. And while it's loose you can work a bit of that grease around it. Then on to this lovely task. And you're going to want to work a bunch of this uh, anti-wear grease all around what's going to be as bearing. Then again, we're going to have to build this bearing up with these tiny little ones. And we need to get as other side bearing or the other side of the race. Make sure they're all staying in place. And carefully slide that inside. Then drop a spring down. And again, tells you to already compress it. And then with these, I find it easier to get it started at least. If you hold an Allen key across it. Just to get it started. So all the way tight. And then back off one whole turn. And you should have a nice freely operating diff. And again, shouldn't slip. So, once we've got them built up, we've got a bunch of bearings left so let's put these safe somewhere and move these all to one side because I'm not sure if they're just spare or if they're actually needed so at the minute we've got six of the bigger bearings left and then a packet of one two three four five a packet of six seven eight of the little bearings but I'm not sure, never built one of these, so I'm not sure if they're spares or if they're actually needed for anything. But we do have two rather nice feeling uh, differentials. So let's carry on. Right, so we need to get a bearing on each one of these. Then on the rear, this turn is to use the longer output cups. And it does tell you to hold them and make sure the diff gear doesn't spin. So it does look like the stock setting of one whole turn and then back it out a full turn. So all the way in and back it out a full turn. It does look like that. That feels pretty good, it's not trying to turn. So, basically, build them up, 
hold the two out ones, make sure your gear doesn't turn. If it does, tighten it up. But let's crack on, see what else we've got. Right, so we're going to need to build this thing up with these little e clips. So let's see how easy these go on. As clips go, these aren't bad. So I'm going to put a little bit of bearing grease or bearing oil, should I say, into these bearings. So we want one clip, then we're going to put that on. Then we're going to have that gear in place. Then we're going to want another bearing. And then the fun part we'll be getting this side e-clip on because if you're not careful with these they can fire off everywhere but with a decent pair of pliers they're not too bad and that is one very free moving gear so next we're gonna need the chassis back and let's see which way round it wants us so that way so it looks like we dropped the gear in that way. Then we have the diff. I'm not entirely sure which way it's turned us to put the diff. So it must be that way because it lines up. Once we've got that in place, we're going to want some grease on here. And I always find it easier to put this on. It says do it before you put them together, but I just find this so much easier to sort of get it in and then put the grease on. I seem to end up wearing less less of it this way. But once we've got all that in, it then tells us to get P4. So that should drop into place. Then we got three of the tapered headed screws. And obviously you'll have to remove your output shafts to drop the diff in. Because they've got to go uh, through the actual casing. Right, so that's that part done. Let's see what we've got next. So we're going to need this little gear drop a bearing in both sides and again I've put bearing oil on these we're gonna need the chassis back and we've got to drop this in place and it looks like we've got a tiny little hole that we've got to line that shaft up in and just slide it in now it does tell you to temporarily put some sellotape over it but I'm just going to hope it stays. So, we need to get some grease on these. Then, we're going to have to temporarily remove our output shafts. Then if we drop that in, we should be able to get some grease on the rest of it without getting uh, too absolutely covered in it. Then once we've got all that in place, we need to get the cover, line it up with bearing carriers, drop that in. And then you should have four little screws. These are the coarse threaded ones. And we get all these tightened down. So you just want to be mindful that that little shaft doesn't drop out. But that is our front and rear diffs assembled. And I think this video has been long enough. And I'm on 12 hour days. So uh, I think we'll call it a day at that. Let's wrap this one up. There we have it so far. We have the motor mounted. We got the front and rear ball diffs made and the bulkheads fastened on, and a couple of chassis mounts. But it's, uh, it's a really enjoyable build so far. 
um, and I think until you build one of these kits you don't realize all the metal parts that come with it all the carbon and even just the uh, metal inserts there's a lot of stuff on this that you don't normally get in a Tamiya kit unless you, you're building one of this sort of level kits and the uh, the plastics feel really hard I think the last time I built a Tamiya like this was like the TGX TG10 one of the nitro cars kind of feels when you when you cut the little ends off it like glass reinforced plastic and it's got a weird looking texture to it as well but hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am um, it is literally just a self-indulgent build this I, uh, I seen it come out and I never had one as a kid I'd have absolutely loved one but couldn't afford it back then so I just thought I'd treat myself to it now but thanks again for watching WTFRC cars hopefully you enjoy this as much as I do if you do like and subscribe share to friends and family um, don't forget to hit the notification bell and I'll catch you guys again in the next one